Greetings, Cyberdogs and citizens of the internet, and welcome to yet another edition of Dog Mail, the show where I read out the emails that you guys send me from all over the freaking world. In the background of today's video, you can see me working on the Silkworm Gang Village in my Minecraft survival series. And in this episode today, guys, we have got four really sweet dog mails to get through. And remember, guys, if you want to be featured on dog mail, you can get in touch via Facebook, email, dogcraft.net. All of the details are in the description box below. And remember, guys, just because your email doesn't appear on the dog mail show, that doesn't mean I haven't read it. I read every single dog mail that I get. And before we get cracking on today's dog mails, guys, I just want to apologize to all of the dog mail fans out there for the amount of time it has taken for this dog mail to come out since the last one. I have been one busy ass cyber dog over the last month and a half, but uh, you know, I thought today it's such a beautiful day in London. The sun is out and man, I just want to make a freaking dog mail. I want to read some emails that you guys have sent me. And uh, even though there haven't been dog mails for the last few weeks, guys, I've been reading all of the dog mails that you guys have been sending me and it's just been freaking sweet. Keep them coming. Without further ado, my friends, let's get into the dog mails for today's episode. And the first dog mail comes from a cyber diggity doll called Doggy1781, and he has the following to say. Hi Ren Dog, I have just watched your latest Let's Play MC Survival series and I thought that I'd let you know how much you and your vids inspire me. I like how you're not afraid to show everyone that a grown man like yourself plays video games and enjoys himself as much as I do playing them. You have created the world that makes you the happiest and you're not ashamed at all. You are a true, a true role model to all of us. Thank you sincerely, Doggy1781. I'm a guy. Some people get confused by the username. Well, <laughs> I wasn't exactly confused by your username, Doggy but thank you very much for sending in that dog mail and you know what your dog mail got me thinking about the fact that yes I am a grown man and yes I do play video games I know that kind of sounds weird but it's kind of you know I haven't really ever thought about it in that way and uh, certainly there would be people on this planet who would be telling me that maybe I shouldn't be playing games anymore, like my mama dog, like my daddy dog. <laughs> they would probably be saying to me, man, you need to put those freaking games down. You need to buy yourself a house. You need to get a mortgage. You need to get a real job. <laughs> uh, but you know what, man? I've been, playing, I've been playing games since I was, I don't know, 11, 10, 9. I don't even remember when I started playing games, but I mean... You know, playing games became a part of my genetic makeup in a way, and I cannot imagine a world where I wouldn't be playing some kind of game on some kind of device, whether it be a board game, a computer game, a console game. It's just, you know, computer games have brought so much reward to my life over the last, I don't know, however many years. And your dog mail got me thinking about uh, a life without games. So, you know, I've been trying to picture myself, uh, you know, living without any games at all. And, you know, I've got to tell you something, man. I, I just don't think I could do it. Games are such an important part of my life. They're so ingrained in the person that I am that uh, I, I honestly cannot imagine an existence without some sort of gaming jazz going down. Um, and, you know, I've, I've been thinking about this topic a lot since I read your dog mail and you know, I think I realized that games are, games sort of act as, I don't know, almost like a, like company for me. They're, they're almost like my, my best friend. They're almost like, uh, you know, a, I don't know, a part of me that I, I fill with imagination, with a fantasy world with, with, in which I can escape. And I think the reason for that is because I've always been a solitary person. Ever since I can remember, I've always preferred to do things by myself. You know, I've told you guys so many stories of the adventures that I've gone on at school. You know, every weekend I used to go to the forest, I used to go to the river, I used to go to the lakes. And all of those adventures were always by myself. I mean, every now and then I would, you know, a friend would come with me. But for the majority of the time, my free time is spent with myself and no one else. And I think that, you know, games act as like a companion for me in that way. And um, I think that while I was growing up, and even now that I'm a grown man, <laughs> I guess I use games to, to replace the social side of being alive. And man, that, that, that does sound kind of sad, but um, in a way, it suits me. It suits the person that I am, because even now, uh, I, I prefer to be alone. You know, if, if you were to say to me, okay, do you want to spend the weekend alone? Or do you want to spend the weekend with like 10 people? 
I'd be like, you know what? I, I, I'm going to choose the alone option, man. Because you know what? I'm totally comfortable and totally happy and totally um, content to be alone. Um, it's just the way that I've always been. And I think games are like, uh, you know, they, they sort of fill that gap. They're, you know, aside from the fact that, you know, games offer an escape for my mind. You know, I have like a creative brain. So my brain requires a, a ton of stimulation. And games offer that stimulation in, in you know, much more than like a movie can, for example. You know, a, a game, you, you immerse yourself into a game. Even a first-person shooter, like a story game or a... Or anything like that you literally become a part of the story you're a part of the movie and you can immerse yourself into the world in a, in a, in a way that you just cannot do with movies or with series or with books or anything like that and I think that's why my brain is so attracted to games and will always be uh, so attracted to games um, you know and, and obviously Minecraft is, is was you know such an amazing game for me to stumble across because not only did it allow me, myself to emerge myself into the into a world it allowed my imagination to to suddenly come to life it, it, it allowed the the imagination that I had when I was 10 to suddenly find a new freaking bloom you know the my 10 year old brain is alive in Minecraft man every you know all of those feelings that I had when I was 10 when I was building forts when I was imagining stuff all of that stuff comes alive when I play Minecraft and you know, I just, I just love it so much. I, I love games so much. And, and I know there's tons of you out there who feel exactly the same. And I know there's also tons of people out there who also judge us uh, as people who play tons of games and who have games as such an important part of our lives. And you know what? To those people I say, you know, I don't judge you for spending half of your life uh, watching football or, or, you know, like playing golf. I don't know, whatever, whatever like other people do. I don't judge them at all. So, you know, they shouldn't be judging us at all. And I think that it's going to be kind of strange, man. I think that um, in, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years time, we're going to look back at gamers and we're going to see them in a different light. We're going to see them as people who were using technology to basically enhance their brain, you know, to, to, to strengthen their mind, to give their imagination an outlet. And uh, maybe a hundred years ago, that was in the form of painting or that was in the form of, of music. And in this century and in 2014, our outlet, our creative outlet, our imagination, the outlet for our imagination is games. And that's freaking sweet, man. And, you know, I read a, an article in a newspaper or a, a couple of days ago that said that um, computer games actually enhance motor function. And um, they did a study where they had uh, people staying like in a, in, a, in a test house or whatever. And half of them had to play, I think it was Mario Brothers or something. Uh, for a few hours every day and the other half didn't didn't play any games and, and at the end of the test period the guys that had been playing mario brothers showed uh, an increased level of motor skills which i think is you know uh, i don't know what that means but all you know to me that says maybe games aren't as bad as uh, as we think they are um but anyway doggy1781 thank you so much for that freaking dog mail and keep on gaming uh, you know, if you're a gamer like me, man, freaking high five to you and keep it going, man. Let's move on to the next dog mail, my friends. And this one comes from Better. And they had the following to say. Dear Ren Dog, I would not mind if you used this on dog mail. I have loved your videos and been a subscriber ever since season one. In fact, it is because of you that I started to play Minecraft. Damn, Mojang, they should be offering you a sponsorship for all of the new players you have brought in. Hell yeah! Uh, over the course of watching your videos and watching the Cyberdog Nation grow has been quite the experience for me. I no, no longer consider you just some guy that is going to shove a pickaxe up my butt crack if I don't watch the previous video, but rather as my friend, as does the world, the, the world Cyberdog Nation, which is the only reason I'm telling you about this. However, I have more of a personal question at this moment and apologize in advance for this extremely long mail. That's okay, better. <laughs> I completely understand if you don't have time to reply, but if you can just remember to stay awesome. I am currently a high schooler and right now there is so much stress in my life to do well in exams and getting into a good college. This along with family, my consistent failures and general lack of awesomeness in life has left me quite drained. It seems that everywhere I turn I just keep disappointing everyone I care about. In addition to this, for the first time in my life, I have liked a girl. However, there is so many complications to it. I mean, she is so far out of my league, it is like we are playing a different sport altogether. I don't know what it is like, uh, like someone. All I know is that when I am around this person, I know that I feel happy. And for me, that is a big thing. There is absolutely no chance of a guy like me being with her. 
I know you know you always say to keep climbing that, that staircase, but at this point in my life, it feels as if I can't even find the first step. Seeing, seeing as you seem to be coming out of a similar situation, I was wondering if you could help. Thank you for being the best friend that I don't actually know better. Well, thank you so much for that dog mail better. And you know, your, your dog mail really touched um, a, a, a spot in my heart because like you say, I have been going through a similar experience where in front of me has been this giant ass staircase. And, uh, you know, I've been doing my best to take uh, one step at a time. And I'm totally with you, man. And for all of you guys out there who also have a giant ass staircase in front of you, listen up. I think I may be able to provide some, uh, some wise words and a little bit of help to get you up those first few stairs. Now, we've all got staircases in our life. And some of them are huge, some of them are small. But they're all in front of us. And... This, these staircases represent all of the problems, all of the complications, all of the issues in our lives. And what we are trying to do is climb this staircase to get to the top uh, to flush out all of the complications. Now, when you take a step back and you look at your staircase in its entirety, it is 100% overwhelming. It is, I mean, it is just, it, it's like two kilometers up into the air and you think to yourself, there is absolutely no freaking ways I'm getting up that staircase. It's impossible. And if you look at your life from a perspective where you are, you're, you're looking at every single thing that is wrong in your life that you're trying to solve all at the same time, that's when it seems absolutely impossible. However, if you just take a different approach to the staircase, it can actually help you a lot. And I'm a, I'm a call this approach compartmentalization of the staircase. And this is exactly what I started to do when I started to climb that staircase, when I started to come out of the dark place that I was in about a year ago. This was the step that I took and this is what helped me the most to get out of the hole that I was in. I don't want you to look at your staircase as a giant freaking construction of pain and complications and problems. I want you to focus in. I want you to zone in on each step of the staircase. So instead of looking at the staircase, let's look at the steps. And when you compartmentalize your staircase in this way, it makes it so much easier to take that first step. I'm going to give you an example. When things went down in my life, about a year ago, I broke up with my girlfriend, things went absolutely crazy. My staircase was enormous. I suddenly had, I, you know, I suddenly had to deal with living alone. I suddenly had to deal with paying a ridiculous amount of rent. I suddenly had to deal with the fact that I still needed to make YouTube videos, that I didn't have a job, that I was trying to make a game, that everything was falling apart, that I wasn't focused anymore, that I just couldn't get my freaking jazz together. All of this overwhelming freaking wave of terror and pain and complications just flooded over me. And every time I looked at my staircase, it was too big, man. And I just gave up and I went to sleep or I, I don't know, I zoned out or I watched TV for 10 hours. But then I started to compartmentalize the steps of my staircase and things became a lot easier. The first step that I took, I zoned in on the YouTube stair. And what did the YouTube stair look like? Rendog, it, it had a sign on it and it said, Rendog, make a video every day. And for the next week, the next two weeks, the next three weeks, I can't remember how long it was. That is what I focused on. I focused on that stair. Make a video every day. And I woke up in the morning and that was my focus. And because you focus your mind on one task at a time, suddenly you are zoning in on, the, on the, that very first step up your staircase. The rest of the staircase is still there. But you're not looking at it right now. You're looking at the first freaking step. So, better in your situation. Let's have a look at what's going down in your life, right? You talk about the fact that you have a lot of pressure about doing well in your exams. And getting into a good college. Well, the way that I see it, my friend. Your first step of your staircase is right there. Your very first step is to do well in your exams. That should be your focus because you know what happens when you do well in your exams? You take another step up, which is getting into a good college. So that very first step of doing well in your exams is actually two steps up your staircase, even though you may not know it. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to focus in on your exams. 
I want you to study your freaking butthole off. I want you to set yourself a goal. Think about it like a game, right? You need, you need, to, you need an achievement. And that achievement is freaking A's for exams. You need the A plus achievement in your game of life. And you know what's going to happen when you hit those A's in your exams, which you will do? Suddenly you'll find yourself not only on that step, but you'll be on the other step above it. Because you'll get yourself into a good college with really good results from your exams. And guess what? When that happens, things are going to get better with your family. Because suddenly the, the, the anxiety that you're feeling about doing well in your exams... The anxiety that you're feeling, like the pressure from your family to do well, suddenly all of that disappears. Because you've done well in your exams and you've gotten into a good college. So, when you compartmentalize your staircase in this way, my friend, it makes it so much easier to climb that staircase. And let's take another example. Let's talk about this, this girl that you are interested in at school that you don't think you have any chance with. Well, firstly, let me tell you something about girls. And guys, if you're, if you're girls watching out there. Girls and guys, if you don't know them, or if you're attracted to them and you've never spoken to them, they're kind of like, I don't know, I'm going to compare them to like a box of cereal, right? In the, in the supermarket. Damn, it looks tasty, man. That is some tasty ass looking cereal. And you want to freaking chow down on that cereal. But you know what? Sometimes when you get that freaking box of cereal, you open it up and you, you eat that cereal. <laughs> it's actually not as sweet as you thought it would be. And... <laughs> that's just the reality of like I, I think it's like a natural reaction right like our very first natural instinct towards being attracted to someone is a, is a physical attraction but it's not always the case that the person that you are physically attracted to ends up being the person that you thought they were like what your brain is doing when you see someone that's like super attractive you and you don't know them and you don't speak to them your brain creates an image of what you think that person is going to be like your brain like makes a fantasy of that person in your brain right because you don't actually know them you've never spoken to them you don't actually know what kind of personality they have even though they may be ridiculously hot they might they may end up being a complete douchebag or they may end up being someone that you don't you're not actually compatible with at all so in your case better you need to basically talk like talk to this girl i don't know if you're talking to her or not it sounds like you're not. It sounds like you're just like attracted to it, right? So let's comp let's compartmentalize this part of your staircase, right? At the moment, you're looking at like the whole thing. You're like, oh my God, I need to talk to her. I need to date her. I need to go out with her. I need to be perfect. You know, like we have to, I have to be like a great boyfriend, blah, 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 blah. All of those freaking things are, are like hundreds of stairs up your staircase. Forget all of those stairs, man. Let's go with the first step. And the first step is talking to her, man. The first step is, strangely enough, not about her at all. The first step is about you. Is this girl actually who, you, like, the, the person that you think she is? Is she actually as awesome as your brain is telling you she is? You, you don't know until you speak to her, right? So when you think about it, that way it makes it much easier to approach her, right? And that's your very first step up this particular part of your staircase. Just talk to her. Just, just do it. Talk to her for you. Don't talk to her for her. You need to figure out whether this girl is actually worth all of the effort. And what better way to do that than just freaking strike up a conversation. Just say hello. Next time, you know, you see her, say hello, man. Ask her how her day is. Uh, one of the questions that I always like to ask is what did you have for lunch? <laughs> it's a simple question. Everybody has lunch. Everybody has an answer. And you can usually start up some sort of conversation from what did you have for lunch? <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, anyway, better. Thank you so much for that email. I hope that I've managed to help you. And uh, it's all about compartmentalizing those staircases, guys. One step at a time, man. And anyway, good luck with your exams. I know you're going to do well. Good luck with the girl. And even if, if it doesn't go the way that you want, trust me, my friend. There's loads of other girls out there that are probably way better than she is. And... And you'll find her. Anyway, guys, let's move on to the next dog mail. And this one comes from Tamil Co. And he or she has the following to say. Dear Sir Ren Diggity Dog, I am Tamil Co, but you can call me Josh. Okay, hey Josh. <laughs> you are my most favorite Minecrafter, that's for shizzle. 
I think you are so freaking sweet and I just want to say thank you so much for doing what you do as every day when I come home from college and I see that you uploaded a new video I get a smile all, all over my face kind of like the face Beatrice does when she sees Griswold you know what I'm saying <laughs> anyways I've written so much already but I have a couple of questions number one what was your first ever video on YouTube or video you were featured in if you can put a link in the description what what is my first video ever on YouTube damn I'm pretty sure it must have been a Terraria video. I, I don't actually know, man. It was so freaking long ago. I have no idea. It was either Terraria or Minecraft video. I don't know. Number two. Can you stop making me laugh? My face freaking hurts, but in fact, don't stop. I kind of like it. It tickles. <laughs> um... It's kind of an awkward question. I'll carry on making you laugh, my bro. And finally, number three. What is the strangest thing you've encountered on Minecraft? Mine is Pogo the Sheep, smiley face. Um... It would definitely make my year if you put this in a dog mail. Hope you have a great year. Tamil co exclamation mark. What is my the strangest thing that I've encountered in Minecraft? Yeah, Pogo is definitely, I agree with you, man. Pogo is definitely one of the strangest things that I've encountered in Minecraft. Um, the other strangest thing has got to be Diablo El Pollo. Freaking chicken in the nether. I mean, when I saw that chicken up in the nether, I was like, what the jazz? What is going on here? I thought that I'd seen everything in Minecraft, but chicken in the nether... I mean, what the jazz. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for that dog mail, Tamilco. And I do hope you have a great year too. Anyway, guys, let's move on to the next and final dog mail for today. And this one comes from a curious cyber dog. And they have the following to say. I have sent you a dog mail before, but whether or not you got it, I will probably never know. I have some more things to say, so here it goes. Man, that was like a rhyme. That was sweet. Number one, you should build a chapel on Silkworm Gang Island. How sweet would it be to come there and get lawfully wedded? Griswold and Hippolyta could make it official. That's a good point, man. Griswold and Hippolyta actually haven't been married yet. They're kind of living in a... Uh in sin <laughs> number two where is starbound it seems like you've forgotten about it completely i haven't heard it mentioned in a video at all and i really loved it same with dog mail do you know how to record gameplays on consoles like ps3 thank you for reading this huge huge message from a curious cyber dog where is starbound well guys um you know i started playing starbound and i really freaking loved the game i absolutely loved it but because it was in alpha or beta or it still is in alpha or beta or whatever form of uh, development cycle it is in um the character wipes and the world wipes were kind of getting me down and you know one of you cyber dogs actually wrote to me about starbound and you said to me that you weren't really getting the the, the full ren dog experience in in the starbound uh series but you know because i was basically just playing starbound there wasn't any magic in it, man. And the reason there wasn't any magic in it is because I didn't want to build anything. I didn't want to make, like, a, a new world. I didn't want to create new characters, create a new world, create, like, you know, a freaking Frodome and all the sort of stuff that we did in Terraria because it's just going to get wiped. And when, when it came to that stage when I was literally just playing Starbound without actually putting any, like, awesome magic and any, like, uh, creativity and any... Um, you know imagination into it I thought to myself well now you're just doing the same thing that hundreds of other people on YouTube are doing and that's not what I wanted to do when I make a series I want to make I try want to I want to try and make it special man I, I don't want it just to just be playing a game for the sake of it and I will definitely be playing Starbound again but I'm going to wait for the full release when we can actually start creating a world when we can start being creative when we can start building awesome jazz and not have to worry about it being wiped not have to worry about bugs not have to worry about like you know imbalances in the game and whatnot and I think I'm probably going to keep this philosophy for all alphas and betas moving forward alphas and betas are really awesome because it gives you early access to the game but as like a YouTuber you know, alphas, alphas and betas are, they're, they're difficult because you, you don't, you can't actually make a full series. You can't actually make like, like really good content that will be timeless, right? Because that's what, that's what I'm trying to do here, man. I'm trying to create series that people can watch for years on end. You know, in five years time, I want people still to be able to watch my Minecraft series from the beginning to the end. And when you play a beta or an alpha of a game, then you're just playing a game on YouTube and thousands of people do that. So, um... So yeah, man, and I, I did enjoy Starbound. I know tons of you guys loved it too, but guys, let's let's be honest. Let, let's be honest up in here, man. The game was in beta. There was only so much we could do. 
and wouldn't we much rather be focusing all of our attention on like the stuff that we're working on now like the stuff that's that's solid man the stuff that that is already established like minecraft like feed the beast etc and of course uh you know dog mail is still there it didn't go away it was just on hiatus but here we go man here's a dog mail for you and uh, do you know how to record gameplay on consoles like ps3 I, I i think so i think you need a video card that you put into your computer and then you then you attach your ps3 to your computer and then you can record your ps3 on fraps or bandicam just like you could any other game i'm not entirely sure how to do audio i'm not sure if the video card records the audio but i don't know um i've never done it before i don't think i i, I don't think i would do it unless like a ridiculously sweet game came out on ps4 or something and i just had to make a series um, but anyway, thank you so much for that dog mail, a curious cyber dog, really, really sweet, uh, dog mail episode today, guys. And thank you to every single one of you who has sent me a dog mail. And remember guys, if you want to get a dog mail featured on the show, you can get in touch via Facebook, dogcraft.net or email. All the, de the details are in the description box below. And just another big thank you to every single one of you who has sent me a dog mail over the last few weeks. It has been freaking sweet. Anyway, guys, that is the end of today's show. Hope you have enjoyed it. This has been Ren Diggity Dog reading dog mails, and we will see you in the next video. Goodbye, my friends.